Hey, everyone. Namaste, everyone. Welcome to N5D Facebook Live. My name is Greg Prescott. I'm the founder and webmaster of N5D.com. And hello to everyone that's joining us. Nicole, Connie, Dee, Heather, Pat Cologne, a friend of mine from upstate New York, Candice Craw goldman Rhonda, Connie, Sherry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I love those little hearts that are going on down there. Thank you so much, everyone. Much gratitude for that. Um, I love it when you guys tell us where you're from, too. Uh, here's, hang on. Bear with me. Um, I'm trying to get all these questions down. But I love it when you guys put on there where you're from because not only does it give me an idea of where we're reaching for N5D, but also gives you guys a chance to basically network with each other. You might find that there's somebody in your own town that's joining us right now, and it's an opportunity to meet Star Family. So thank you. Brenna. So what I'd like you to do is, if you have a question for me, feel free to ask me anything. And just, I've got the first two down from Jack and Brenna, but just preface it with a question mark or two or three of them, and then write your question, and hopefully I, I see them all and get to them all, okay? So I do have a few questions um, already that were written down and uh, asked to me on my personal Facebook page. So, and here, here we are too. I mean, people are saying hello from Manchester, UK, and LA, a couple people from LA. See, there's an op opportunity to, to network. There's one from upstate New York, my old stomping grounds, Kansas City, Fort Myers. So grateful that you're all joining me right now. Thank you. So while people are coming in, I just wanna say that it, it's funny how universe works. Um, you know that you're always being divinely guided when things just kind of like fall into place without asking. And here's a great example. I just moved into this house. It's on the beach here in Siesta Key, and I love it. It's actually 50 square feet bigger than the house I was living on that was on the intracoastal a couple miles away from Siesta Key. And, uh, it includes free cable, which I only watch football, so it's good enough for that, and free internet. And I don't have to worry about paying a person to mow my lawn or take care of the pool or whatever. Uh, so overall, it's probably, you know, like I said, it's 50 square feet bigger, and I'm overall paying maybe $400 less uh, <laughs> because I don't have to pay for all that other stuff. But I moved in, and uh, when I would do laundry, there would be some kind of backup where on my floor in the living room, it would get wet and the pipes were backing up. So they took one of those snakes and, and, and a camera and stuck it down the pipe system. They found out that the pipes are like 50 some odd years old and they have to replace the pipes. So they're going to come in on Friday, map out the area, and then next week, starting on Monday, they're going to uh, basically bring wheelbarrows and cement and jackhammers and tear everything up in, in this house and put in new cast iron pipes all throughout the house. So I can't be here for five days and I'm thinking, where am I gonna go? My landlord actually said he owns this beautiful house here on Siesta Key, big wraparound driveway and everything. He said I could stay with him. And I appreciated that and I told him thank you. And then right before I went on, I get, I get this email from Royal Caribbean offering, offering me a free cruise, starting on a five-day cruise from Monday through Friday. And all I have to do is pay for taxes and port charges and stuff like that. And 
So I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but thank you, universe. And I look at that also from a metaphysical standpoint. And, uh, you know, when you look at the house, like in your dreams and dream analysis, the house is you. So the pipes are getting an upgrade. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, hopefully this is symbolic of what we're all going to be going through is some kind of DNA upgrade, maybe. So, um, well, the universe is always looking out for us anyway, and you're always divinely guided to be exactly where you are. So <laughs> here's a quote from Rosemary. Hope you're using sunscreen. Actually, I was at the beach today, and I was under my umbrella. I was playing my guitar, and uh, I still got sunburn, probably from the sun reflecting off the sand onto me. So, of course, I did my walk of gratitude back and forth, but that only takes like 20 minutes to, to do this walk. So I don't think I got sunburn from that. But yeah, um, I only do use sunscreen on my face. Um, it's a holistic one, no parabens, no retinal palmitate, none of that crap in there. And for the rest of me, I don't use it at all. And I find that people here in Florida, even the darkest tanned people still need to use some kind of sunblock on their face. Just the way it is, the sun's really hot here. Okay, send out a few prayers, positive intentions, however you want to phrase it, for Ashley Bashley McIlvain, who says to send her some positive intentions, prayer, whatever you can, as she gets her own source of income, and maybe to figure out how. So you know, go within and hopefully put it out there as well, but you're always being guided to figure out exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing here in life. And even if you get a job that might not be the highest vibrational job, it's an opportunity to actually bring your light and to bring your energy into a place of lower vibration to help raise up everyone else's, okay? So we got all sorts of people here. Darrington, here's Darrington, Washington. Another one from upstate New York, Houston. Okay, uh, Candace, my dear friend, um, hey, Candace, you have to send, send me that picture or post it or tag me. Candace was at the drum circle last night. Uh, she had a conference here with Michelle over the weekend and a uh, great story that I can tell from Candace's group regression. But she's asking me if my vertigo is gone. No, it's not. It feels better today. But what I've been shown is that, and I made a post earlier today, is that for all of us that are experiencing vertigo, I'm guessing that we're all energy sensitives and we're picking up on these timeline shifts that are that are, are going on right now. And each time these timeline time time easier said than done. Each time these timeline shifts occur, we get that feeling of vertigo because we're moving in time. And it, it's so clear to me right now. But so so Candace did this group recession and afterwards people were telling about what they experienced during this QHHT group regression. So she asked the first person, she tells this amazing story and she goes on to ask the second person and as she handed the microphone to the second person, I whispered in her ear, I said, don't, I'll tell you in private, but I was a light being surrounded by a group of elders it was basically some kind of council and my body was glowing this uh, it was like white light with yellow light around it but I told her don't tell anyone and uh because it wasn't my conference this was something that Candace and Michelle were doing on their own and I, I didn't want to attract any attention to me anyway I was just kind of like an observer there so anyway the woman who was Alba uh, finished telling her story and then Candace goes to the next person and tells the next person, Aurora, tells the same story that I told Candace, except she was able to elaborate a little bit more about what I did. So, and I'm sitting on the ground, um, I'm sitting on the floor there, cross-legged as I'm doing right now. And as soon as this woman started saying the same regression that I had, I popped up like a woodchuck popping out of a hole. And I was just like glued into her uh, about what she was saying. and. I, well, I can't really say much more about the connection we have. And there's a connection with several other people that I have made from this one connection.
from her past life regression, but it's really special. And when the time's right, I will tell you more. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to have to scroll back. <laughs> I love this. Dean Chambers, why do we need more cowbell? We just do. <laughs> it's a universal thing. I think in the Pleiades, they need more cowbell and Arcturus and <laughs> other dimensions. They're still playing that cowbell. That's a great question, Dean. Thank you for the la levity and the laughter. Okay, Jody's saying that she's a second grade teacher in a public school. She teaches mindfulness to them. Nothing has ever worked this well while I've been teaching for 23 years. That is so cool that you're able to reach second graders with mindfulness and really planting the seed for them. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, Heather's saying, can I put it out to universe to help someone else awaken? You can put it out there, but unfortunately we live in a free will universe. They're going to really have to want to. What you can do is plant the seeds, you know, and kind of put things out there like, wow, look at all those white lines in the sky. <laughs> I heard they're called chemtrails. You know anything about that? And you know, just little, little things, get them questioning. This is what I do to get people question to question things that are, we all have in common you know, GMOs and foods, stuff that's really like low level kind of questioning things and, you know, get them going in that direction. All we can do is light the candle and hope that they maintain the flame. Okay. So. Hannah's asking how will tomorrow's twin flame gateway affect me due to my twin passing i feel like i'm missing out well on, honestly hannah i'm not aware of what tomorrow's twin flame gateway is. oh 1010 oh yeah say i live without time so much i don't even pay attention to the dates it's like every day is monday every day is sunday it doesn't matter every day is another day i've been working every day since 2009 all the days kind of blend in. So how will tomorrow's twin flame gateway affect me due to my twin passing? I feel like I'm missing out. You're not missing out on anything. There's no time. <laughs> Ultimately, we're living in no time as it is. Time doesn't really exist. It's only familiar to us as a third dimensional reality because of the way the sun revolves or the earth revolves around the sun and spins and so on and so forth. Um, as a matter of fact, if you were to live on Mars, let's say you're 40 years old here. If you lived on Mars, because the average day on Mars is about 28, 29 hours long, you might be 40 here, but you'd be 34 maybe on Mars. So uh, time is really only relevant to live on. And in the end, it really is not existing because all timelines exist at the same time. So in essence, your twin is still with you and experiencing that with you. Hope that answered the question. Love all the hearts. Hello to everyone that's just joined us. Rebecca, uh, Bridget, Roseanne, uh, Andrea, Susie. Oh boy, here's a great one from Debbie. Uh, she's saying, I'm constantly getting electrical zaps, everything I touch. Anyone else having this issue? I know that I was just talking to my friend Rebecca earlier today and she has that issue. So you guys should hook up and kind of talk to each other. Um, you are definitely an energy sensitive and I probably would get guess to say that you're also experiencing some kind of form of indi indi uh, vertigo and maybe some energy kind of imbalance because what's going on, you're picking up on this energy and you're probably absorbing a lot of energy too from other people. Um, I'm just curious, Debbie, when the last time and how you ground, um, do you actually take the time to get out in nature and do you find that that helps at all? Because I'm finding that grounding is really, really big right now. Um, there's a lot of people that you'll see within this genre, especially um, that are starting to lose it and it's because they're not grounded. It's that simple. You know, try to find the time to get out every day and ground yourself. And as I've mentioned before, you know, I, I get this message from my guides to tell me to tell you guys, and to spread it out as much as I possibly can. These five things, love, 
forgive, express gratitude, keep a high vibration, ground. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in this genre who are fake, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they'll tell you something and not do the, these are things I live by. I'm not telling you to do them without me doing them myself. And all you guys know that I, you know, I do my walk of gratitude. I have my love bubble meditation. You know, this is what we all should be doing. I'm not telling you, you have to do anything, but this is what my guides are telling me to tell you guys to share it. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. It will all those ideas will help make, make the world a better place. <laughs> Mary Jo is asking, do I have anything to tell her? Um, not in particular, I'd have to actually tune into your energies. And um, even though I am, um, I do see things before they happen, um, I have to tune into your energies personally and to get a better idea and, and a better reading of you. Okay. So I know I'm way behind on the questions here, so bear with me. I've got some questions that I'd like to answer too that were sent to me. Uh, Rachel's asking, do you believe we choose everything we will experience in this life in our soul contract before incarnation? Definitely. And we've made all these different soul contracts. We've actually made, each one of us has made soul contracts with literally millions of beings on the other side of the veil. For example, you might make a soul contract with the person that's working at a checkout counter at the local grocery store. And there's something you might say while you're going through line, the line and checking out and you make that connection. And even if that's a grocery store, that's not even in your, in your local town in your three states away, you guys were supposed to cross paths. All of us were supposed to cross paths, especially with each other, not just me with all of you, but you with each other that are going on here. This is one of the reasons why I built in 5D is to bring star family and soul groups together. So uh, keep keep reaching out to each other. As you see comments on um, that are going by, make sure you, uh, if you see somebody that you resonate with, send them a friend request. You know, build your uh, star family and your soul groups through me okay i love i love it when that happens when people come together like that okay papender oh gosh i'm getting so far behind they're going by me can a person be awake even if he or she doesn't see or hear other beings or guides how can we tell if one is awake or waking up oh, of course you can be awake there's so many people here you know many of us have gotten these abilities new abilities or been able to refine our abilities recently in maybe the last five, 10 years. But, and a lot of you will be having new abilities that will be coming on, but just because your abilities haven't surfaced yet, doesn't mean that you're not awakened or have anything to worry about. Um, in general, remember uh, Dolores Cannon was the one that said, all you really have to be is 51% positive to make the shift. Just be a good person. And do those five things, love, express gratitude, forgive, ground yourself, and uh, keep a high vibration. You'll be fine, okay? And Heather's asking, what has helped you open up your heart center? It's funny you mention that. Um, Candace at the conference was wondering what her, she was talking about her Virgo, or her, um, her aura, before she was introducing the next uh, speaker. And I tuned in on her aura, and she ha she has one of the largest auras I've seen. Uh, normally, when you look at somebody's aura, initially what you see is this thin, translucent energy, and then the energy shoots out to about this big. And then after that is usually your outer aura. But Candace's inner aura was, well, let me get the, normally an inner aura might be like that. Hers was like twice as big. It was huge. And it was green, very, very beautiful, like emerald green. And what green is, is the heart chakra. When Candace speaks, she's always coming from the heart. She has one of the most beautiful hearts of anyone that you'll ever meet. And she gets so emotional sometimes because she, she has such a, a beautiful heart that she'll tear up and just get uh, uh, emotional. But for opening and keeping that open, Getting Out in Nature, uh, Sonia Shaquette, there's a book, one of my favorite books, 
It's called True Balance. Sonia Shakat uh, wrote it. And she said that whenever you're feeling an imbalance in the heart chakra to go outside, what do you see when you're outside? You see green, the color of the heart chakra. So get outside, ground yourself in nature. And that's a great way to open up and clear the heart chakra. So just moving on here. <laughs> Kathy Johnson, why am I pulling away from the world? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I have enough information on that one, Kathy. I'm sorry. But I know that feeling. I think I, I think I know the feeling that you're talking about. Sometimes it's just like there's an energetic vibrational mismatch that's going on as if you can't connect to others. And it feels like there is that separation. And maybe that's part of what the separation of the two Earths is doing. And uh, that's what you're feeling. But I would really need a little bit more information. But I think that's along the lines of what you're talking about. Taryn says, if I don't ground myself, I start turning into an angry mama bear. <laughs> Oh gosh, oh man, and I just missed a question. I'm gonna to have to go back and catch all the questions I missed because they're going by too quickly. Um, Shirley said that her grounding at the beach yesterday made a huge difference. I so need to do this more often despite a busy schedule. I, I highly recommend it. Um, there's nothing outside of you know, love that's one of the most important things that you can do is to ground right now. Maheshin, I can't, I don't know what that, I can't pronounce that name. Do humans have other births? I'm not sure what that question is. Bode Ma is saying, hi Greg, blockages to the rear sacral chakra, the meaning of that. The rear, are, do you mean the root sacral? What's blocking there? Usually that would be like uh, lower chakra issues, money, security, housing. Yeah, maybe relationships or something like that. But usually that, that's what happens when, when the root uh, chakra is blocked. Um, you might want to carry around some uh, stones that are associated with the root chakra too. Put them in your pocket. Um, and as always, ground. Uh, Sherry's asking, can you change your soul contract? I think on higher levels you can. Um, but when you came in here to do, you basically made a contract to do it. Um, so you can revocate um, certain things, I'd, I'd imagine, say, that's it, I've had enough. You know, make, it, make a list and tear it up and say, I, I no longer uh, uh, agree to fulfill this anymore. I'm going to start a new soul contract. Um, chances are you probably end up having a walk-in <laughs> beforehand who will say, oh, no, I, I've thought twice about it. We're going to keep doing this. But I don't know about any other people, but I've had at least – seven walk-ins <laughs> in my life. One time, my ex-wife and my daughter both knew when I had a walk-in, but you know, sometimes you're the last one to know. Other times, you'll be the first to know. And you know, one of the examples I used before, um, in my last relationship, all of a sudden, I, you know, I used to sleep with a lot of clothes on, you know, sweatpants and you know, sweatshirt. It was you know, just so cold at night. Now, all of a sudden, I have no clothes on when I'm sleeping at night. So uh, it goes from one, and you know that's you know when little changes like that come in, that's that's when you have these uh, these walk-ins that that come in, and usually when a walk-in comes in, it's an energetic upgrade. So whatever your vibration level was before, um, you've ra risen it up to a point where you can accept more light and a higher walk-in to come in. So it's usually a very good thing. Uh, views on suicide. Darling, that, that's a, ah, wow. You want to bring everybody down, don't you? No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I think that we all do leave when we're supposed to leave. And some people leave via suicide. I, I would guess most of them would probably have to come back um, and clear some karma if they don't have a family that can really understand why they left and forgive them while they're on the other side. Otherwise, there's a lot of karmic ends that 
need to be tied up, but you just, you know, you wish them love regardless whenever you lose a loved one. And uh, when it's suicide, it's, it's tough on everyone. Um, man, that, that's a really tough topic. Um, I could probably get a little deeper, but I'll, I think I'll just leave it at that um, and move to the next question. Are we able to, this is Jason, are we able to escape the soul? Oh gosh, it went by too quickly. <sighs> I gotta scroll down. What's a double blue aura mean? I've never seen a double blue aura, but I do know that the blue aura is the throat chakra. And uh, if you have a very prominent blue aura, you're probably really good at speaking your truth. And uh, you're probably a good orator, a uh, person that can talk easily with other people and uh, probably a good writer too if you can express your words uh, through writing <clears throat> so Catherine says I tuned into your live stream today by chance so that must mean you're gonna say something that I need to hear and yes I've been having some dizziness I've been attributing it to a lack of sleep well, that could be, it could be a lack of sleep, it could be your diet, it could be some medical issue, but what you need to do is really discern, go within um, and ask yourself, have I had this feeling before? What could possibly it be attributed to? And if you can't answer it to anything else, I would assume that many of us are going through this dizziness, this vertigo, this feeling of uneasiness and what we're finding out, and this is what I was showing today, or in the past few days, is that we're really, it's, it's due to merging timelines that's uh, inevitably causing the vertigo. So chances are you're an energy sensitive and you're picking up on that um, energy, okay? Okay, whoops, yeah. oh, there we go. All right, gotta move my computer here. Sorry for the bumpiness here. All right, um, gosh. Heidi's asking, I've been having a lot of prophetic dreams and channeling dreams. Wake up other, with other people's world scenarios throughout the night. Wow. That's awesome. You should share uh, specifically what some of your prophetic dreams are. I think the rest of us would love to, to hear that. Uh, Tom is asking, Greg, what do you know about the event? Do you know when it is likely to happen? I do know what will happen at the event. The when, I don't know. But the event, I've seen, I've felt, I've experienced. Um, <clears throat> I've explained this before, but to those who haven't heard, um, I actually, I've, I, in a vision, I saw myself standing in front of myself from behind, and in the blink of an eye, what happens is this white light floods the planet. And when that happens, all third dimensional worries are gone completely. Uh, money, government, religion, bad relationships, whatever you've had, your boss is an idiot, you know, and all that stuff is gone, it doesn't matter. The only thing you will feel when that white light floods the planet is this light energy from, from source. It's basically source energy and uh, it's unconditional love to a point that you've never experienced in this third dimensional reality. The example I like using is my daughter. She's probably the person I love the most on this planet hands down and uh, the love that I feel for her pales to the love that you will feel when you uh, when this white light floods the planet and the only number I can put to it is about a million times and I'm underestimating it because it's truly indescribable but the love that you'll feel is is at least a million times stronger than any love that you'll ever feel for the thing that you, or things or the people that you love the most on this planet that's what you'll feel during this this event um, when it's going to happen I don't know, my, my guides don't give me dates, but one of the reasons why I built M5D is to raise the critical mass to the point of where we make the event happen. So I think it all depends on us, honestly. And I, I'm kind of leery of people that put out dates because timelines change. And as we're experiencing through the Mandela effect, we're seeing timelines change rapidly, very rapidly, more rapid than ever right now. So, um, to put a date on it, I don't know, but if I were to guess right now, you know, I do follow some astrology and with Pluto being in Capricorn until the year 2023, um, we're going to see a lot of changes going on from this point forward. It entered, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, so we're over the apex 
of the, of the midpoint. And we're going to see a lot of things happen in the next few years. So um, if I were to guess, it would be sometime before 2023, but I, I can't put a date on it. Okay, we have a couple questions. from Here's one from Peggy and one from Karen. What is a walk-in? A walk-in, excuse me, let me have some water first. I'm parched. I love this water. It's uh, Alkalife. It's 10 pH. Delicious. Best water ever. A walk-in um, enters you. Um, it's not It's not a possession or anything like that. It's when sometimes you, you're basically your, your, your soul essence has had enough. It's, it's exhausted. It's, it's, it says, I, I need a replacement. I need a pinch hit or, or something. <laughs> and uh, that's when a walk-in enters. Um, it takes over. It's, uh, you still maintain all your thoughts, everything that you've known about yourself. Um, but oftentimes little things will change. Uh, you might all of a sudden like eating asparagus when you didn't beforehand or all of a sudden you know how to draw when you never had that ability beforehand or you decide that you don't want to wear clothes when you're going to bed it depends you little nuances will change about you but each time you have these walk-ins um, it's basically an energetic upgrade from what you had beforehand and um, you're probably putting out a lot of um, positive energy and it's just time for it. It's, a, it's like a, a, soul, a soul recharge, basically. So, Do you discuss, discuss uh, Beth is asking, do you discuss what walk-ins are on your website? Yes. Uh, if you type in, if you go to the right-hand corner of any web page, if you're on a laptop or a desktop, um, just there's a search bar, bar right there. So just type in walk-ins and you'll get a lot of uh, articles on there. And if you're on a cell phone, just scroll until you get below the articles and there's a search box there. Rick is asking, uh, how can you regain back your sovereignty and government hijacked? Oh shoot, it's gone. <laughs> oh gosh, it goes by so quickly. Uh, well, you can, can revoke uh, personal um, contracts that you made. As for government, I think that's going to act, actually take care of itself. Um, we're moving to a place where money, government, religion, it's non-existent. It, I wouldn't even worry about that at this point. As a matter of fact, this whole crap that went on in Las Vegas, uh, you know, obviously there was multiple shooters. They're saying it was a lone shooter. They're getting caught up in all their lies. You look at the bullshit that was going on with there, and it just is basically put out there to energetically drain you and to use that negative energy against us. So try not to put too much energy into that. Um, it was called the Route 91 Harvest Festival, and it occurred on October 1st. And if any of you guys follow my personal Facebook page, I put, put that picture on there, which breaks it down, the 91 and then the 1st of October, um, 911, uh, was it 91101? <laughs> if you put all the numbers together, it's the same numbers as 911 on uh, 2001. So it, this is how they use these numbers against us and use it in a ritual, ritualistic way to harvest our energy and to use it against us. So. Um, it's the same crap. They use the same plans and the same system time and time and time again. It's getting old. Um, try not to invest too much energy in, into it. For those who truly did get harmed, you know, send them, you know, the families or if they're still alive, send them love and positive energy. But you know, they're, they're using us as basically puppets for their um, deviant ideas and uh, rituals that they're putting out there and. They're about to see soon what um, that's going to get them, and it's not pretty. So Lynn is asking, what do you do to help heal from acute illnesses like flus? My little guys are sick tonight, transitioning to school. Um, I know personally, like 
anytime I have the flu, this is what I do. I take 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C three times a day, and within like four or five days, whatever you have is gone. Now, I don't know how old your children are and how much of a dosage you should be giving them, but that's what I would do. I would find the appropriate dosage, do that three times a day for probably four or five days, and it's gone. Do not get a flu shot. I beg of you, don't get that crap in your system, or and especially, especially don't give, you, give it to your kids. Edith, Edith is saying, used to be able to faintly see auras, but not anymore for years. What happened and how to get it back? Uh, just honestly, the quick and easy answer is I have an article on N5D called How to See Your Aura, and uh, it's real simple and real easy. I, I believe everybody can see their aura and auras of other people. And real quickly, what I do is I, I stand in a mirror, and hopefully there's like a white, like something white or light in the background. And what I do is I focus in on like part of me, like my shoulder area. And what you're going to see is this translucent energy about that that far come off of you. It's going to be clear, but just relax your eyes beforehand first. Like like if you're doing one of those 3D magic eye things, uh, you just relax your eyes and all, then all of a sudden that 3D image comes through. So just relax your eyes and focus on that one area of your body and just relax. And what you're going to see is that, like I said, that energy come off your body, clear, translucent, about that far. And what, when that happens, the first time or two, it'll go away because you get excited. And then, but eventually, you'll start to see your aura come out. And as soon as you see it the first couple times, it'll go away again because you're, you get excited. And once you lose that focus, it, it's gone. But eventually, you're going to see this aura come off your skin, off your body. And it's about that far, probably six to eight inches um, off of your body. And if you can maintain that vision, that, that relaxed state, you're going to see your outer aura. And that's probably maybe several feet off of your body, outside of your inner aura. And the first time you see that, it's going to disappear quickly too, because now you're seeing, <laughs> you're seeing your inner and your outer aura, and you get all excited. And for some reason, when you get excited, it's gone. So it's really important to maintain that really cool, calm focus, and you'll be able to see it. When I was at a conference uh, over the weekend, um, I was looking at the auras of everybody in the room, and uh, it was really interesting to see some auras. As a matter of fact, um, somebody asked uh, Michelle if they knew anyone that could read auras after I just had told Michelle I saw Candace's, and uh, she said, yeah, and she introduced me to this woman, and I read her aura and told her where to go on in 5D to find it. So moving on. Can I see particles? Hmm. I know that some people can see like, um, they call it glitter in the air. I, I can't see that. I see orbs, but I don't, I don't see the particles. And Fredina is asking, do you think shadow people are from another dimension? <clears throat> Hmm. I think shadow, most shadow people are just discarnate souls that for some reason have attachments that are still here and uh, they they don't know that they haven't gone you know to the light yet so they're just for some reason or another they're attached to something or someone but they're kind of like stuck in the lower levels of the fourth dimension. So um, if I don't see shadow people, I, I, I do see entities. And I, since the beginning of August, I've probably seen more since then, uh, since August than beforehand, much more. And I think that's showing us that the veil is lifting. But what I do is I, I smudge my house. And when I smudge, I, I basically say something along the lines as, of, I ask that only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome here. Um, I ask that any dark entities, negative entities, leave immediately. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome here. 
And uh, so I, I only get visited by good ones. <laughs> I think I'm pretty protected anyway from that. But uh, yeah, try smudging if you are seeing them. And uh, you know, if you really have um, enough guidance to do so, you might even want to try to help them and tell them, you know, hey, I understand that you're here and you might be a little lost, but it might be a good idea for you to, uh, you know, perhaps go back to the light, get reconnected with the source. It's okay that you, uh, it's okay to leave. You don't have to stay here. Uh, your friends and family are over there and so on and so forth. You might want to help them too. Um, that's probably the best route to take. So Rain is asking, so walk-ins happen when one grows weary or just upgrading their energy, both. Yeah, um, you, you might be, uh, you, you might just be tired and weary and ready for that energetic up, upgrade. And it just might be a, an energetic upgrade without that, that your body's ready to bring in more light as you become crystalline, okay? Bear with me. Hi to everyone that's joined, and I know I'm probably way behind, behind, but I'm saying hi to Jet, Donald, Eva Marie, Derek, Rick, Kim, Linda. So many people are here, and I'm so grateful that you've joined me and taken the time out to be here with me. Okay. Gosh, there's so many here. <clears throat> I know I've got some questions that um, were asked on my personal Facebook page that I want to get to. And Daphne, D-A-P-H-A-N-E, maybe it's Daphne and it's spelled in a different way. She's, she's asking, uh, when do you think we will be on the new earth? And it's kind of like I mentioned before that I don't really see dates. I've never been given a date. I think a lot of us can feel that the change is impending and it's sometime in the near future. I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I could give you a date, but um, I do know what it will feel like. Um, I, I can, and I described that earlier when the event happens, but uh, when it will happen, I don't know. I wish I could tell you. Hopefully, hopefully right now. How about right now? Hmm. Hopefully soon, okay? So Indira is asking, she's saying that she, all right, this is what she said. I'm a nurse whose main job is to give med medication to our elderly pop population in a nursing home. After learning about Big Pharma and its purpose, I would get terrible anxiety and panic attacks, which led me to lose my job. Needless to say, I'm having a hard time financially and need work that is not minimum wage. How can I get back to doing what I was doing without the panic attacks? How do I handle this? Is it even right? Is it even the right thing to do? Or do I move on and look for other employment and lose my home and more by not being able to afford it? I feel guilty because I'm a nurse, because I became a nurse to help people, not harm them. Thank you. Wow. Well, first of all, thank you for choosing that field. Uh, it's, it's a very honorable uh, position to have with you helping other people. And I guarantee just about everybody I've talked to that's in the medical field was some kind of healer in a, in a past life. So I guarantee you were probably one of those healers, Indira. Well, with your profession, look at it also from a more metaphysical kind of point of view that your energy itself alone is helping people, just you being there. And I know that there's this cognitive dissonance that's going on, that Big Pharma is a bunch of crap, and yet you're giving this medication to these people, these elderly citizens who are basically relying on Big Pharma. Uh, try not to let the Big Pharma issue override your purpose for being here, which is to share your energy as well as help the people. That, that that you're helping. 
you might, if you enjoy nursing, you might perhaps try a different avenue, like like a, um, a stay-at-home nurse, you know, working with somebody one-on-one -on -one in their house. Or, you know, if you have the qualifications and the credentials, maybe do something like become a director of nursing where you're organizing and helping other nurses. That way you're not involved in the prescription part of handing out medications to patients. Um, my guess is that you probably have angelic roots and that's why you're helping on the transitional process for these senior citizens. So share your energy with them. I, I would hope that you'd go back to doing what you were doing, but understand why um, you're there and the purpose of you helping them transition along with sharing your energy, okay? And Trisha Ann is asking, I want to hear more about new earth transition and the ways in which it can happen. Can we still have 3D bodies or is it all energetic? I hear different things. Just wanted your take on it. Well, <laughs> the transition, the transition part I discuss in those three waves, those three tidal waves, that dream I had of the three tidal waves, the first two waves will converge, nothing to fear. They're not actual waves of water. It's just waves of energy and these first two will converge and there'll be a cleansing wave afterwards. Um, as I mentioned with the event, there'll be this white light that floods the earth and of course floods with water of the tidal wave. It's, they're both tied in together. But when that white light, light floods the earth, that's when the event happens. And that's all really boils down to where the critical mass is to really kind of similar to the hundredth monkey effect when it all just takes over at once. But um, yeah, when that happens, you know, we'll know and there's no turning back. You wouldn't want to come back. As a matter of fact, when you're feeling that pure source energy of unconditional love, even if you thought somebody was the biggest fucktard on the planet and you wanted to get revenge with them, it's gone. That thought never existed at that point because it just doesn't matter. The only thing that matters when you're in that pure source, unconditional love is love. And you could sit there for hours, days, years, <laughs> millennia, and just be happy with the love that you're feeling. Not even have to do anything. But I also had the sense of I could create and do anything that I want in this point in time. I can create anything I want at that point in time. So it's going to be a lot of fun as well. Um, and she was asking, Tr Trisha was asking, can we still have 3D bodies, bodies or is it all energetic? Uh, the 3D body, I think, it's just a meat suit. And we're going to recognize each other by our energy signatures. And you actually have two different energy signatures. Uh, the first one is when the moment of conception, when the sperm fertilizes the egg. There's that time signature on there. And the second one is obviously when you're born. For example, I was born at 5.20 a.m., but it's a lot deeper than that. It's not just 5 the, the fifth hour of the day and the 20th minute, how many seconds, how many mil milliseconds was it? Because every millisecond matters. And that's your unique energetic blueprint. And this is how we will recognize each other from these energetic signatures that we each have. Even if somebody was born on the exact same day, at the exact same hour, exact same minute, exact same millisecond, they weren't born in the exact same location. They will not have the same energetic signature as you, period. <laughs> you are unique. You are unique, as we all are. Okay, moving on. Gosh, it's been almost an hour already. I can't believe how quickly time flies. Bear with me. I'm going to try to get to a few more questions here. Oh, wow, this is fascinating. Linda is saying that I hear singing when I'm trying to fall into a deep sleep, like a radio in the other room. Not clear, but 
the tune stays constant. Is this the other side of the veil, a thin veil? I love that question. And I'm going to put a little love heart there if I can. Yeah. Because, Linda, I've heard the same thing, except it wasn't music. It was muffled voices for me. And I've heard that ever since I was a kid. And uh, what you're doing is you're basically channeling. <laughs> Welcome to the world of channeling. Your mind at that point, Linda, is in the alpha state right before you're about to go to sleep. When your mind is in the, that alpha state, you become conducive, basically a receptor for channeling. Also, you can use that, that same alpha state. If you hear that music, perhaps try tapping into your third eye because what's going to happen is you'll start seeing images and visions in your third eye. That's when through the alpha state, it's the easiest way to tap into your third eye. And I have an article on N5D that I wrote. I think it's called Do This Right Before You Go to Sleep uh, to Open Your Third Eye. But gosh, you're right there and you're about ready to channel. Now, what I do say about channeling is be awfully darn careful who you're channeling. There are a lot of dark entities that are out there masquerading as Archangel Michael or Mother Mary or the fictitious Jesus or all the, <laughs> who knows who they're going to come to you as and uh, they're they're they'll give you all this great information you know tell you things that haven't happened and they'll come true and like what happened to a friend of mine she said kill yourself after that so just be careful use your discernment if you're channeling it's one of the reasons why I don't put much channeling on N5D because I don't know myself who the ultimate source is that's giving this information, okay? But that's really exciting, Linda. Um, if that were me, I'd be using it to open my third eye, if your third eye is not open yet. <laughs> and Lynn's saying, I was told in meditation that I was chosen I was a chosen one by Jesus and Mother Mary. <laughs> oh my, I'd be concerned about that. Um, but that's just me. I, I, I think where we're heading is as far away from religion as you can go. And it's really ultimately back to source and uh, source love, unconditional love, source energy uh, has nothing to do with religion. Donna's asking, do I eat 100% clean? Do I ever imbibe in junk food treats? If so, what are your favorites? No, I don't eat 100% clean. Um, junk food, occasionally, um, if I already eat anything, it would probably be like a Snickers bar uh, or a Reese's cup uh, or pizza. Uh, if I'm in upstate New York, they have the best pizza up there. So, and I know damn well that there's, it's probably GMO tomatoes and processed cheese and crappy flour that they use for the crust, but it's so good. You know, it's, but for the most part, you know, yeah, I do eat organic and I do try to eat healthy. I do eat meat. I do eat uh, organic meat and organic chicken, but uh, yeah, sometimes I do partake in stuff that I shouldn't do. Um, once in a while, I will have a soda but it's not something I'll do like seven times a day or something like that. No, no. So yeah. Um, the one thing I learned too is, and I put the article out, 20 things you might not know about me. And I laid it all on the line. You want to know something about me? This is me. Yes, I do smoke cigarettes. I smoke organic um, American spirit cigarettes. I do occasionally drink alcohol. I like a, a strawberry daiquiri on the beach or Jack Daniels honey. I love that. Actually, um, it's really good. And, uh, you know, I I try to eat organic, but not all the time I do. There's a lot, a lot of little things that I do, you know, that they say, oh, if you're in the spiritual community, you shouldn't be doing that. Who are they to tell me what I should or shouldn't do? I'm listening to my higher self. If, it, if you're living a good life, if you're loving people, forgiving people, 
expressing gratitude, maintaining a high vibration, grounding yourself. What more do you really need to do? My third eye is wide open. I still get visions of things that haven't happened yet. Um, I'm a visionary. The, the, everything, despite of these 20 things that I listed that you didn't know about me, it doesn't matter because what matters is you know that you're here to do a purpose, no matter what anyone else says. You know, I, I hope that people don't put me on a pedestal or anything like that because I believe what the Mayans say. In La Catch, Alakine, I am another you. I hope that answered your question. Um, Nicole Marie has some questions. She said, what's your favorite memory outside of your daughter? And that would be going to the beach in Atlantic City, or I'm sorry, Sea Isle City in New Jersey. My parents would take uh, my sisters and me to the beach every summer and we had a camper and uh, we'd go there. Actually, I wouldn't stay in the camper. I had my own little pup tent. I remember my parents would be like, go out and meet other children. And at the time I didn't know what an introvert was. And I couldn't say, no, I'm an introvert. I don't want to meet anyone. But <laughs> my mom would just kind of like shoo us away. Oh, there's some kids over there your age. My sister, Tara, she's an extrovert and she'll talk to everyone. I brought her on a cruise, I don't know, four or five months ago. And by the time it was like a four night cruise, maybe five night cruise, I don't, I, I don't remember. But by the time we got back, she probably knew everybody on the boat, and I might have knew, known, maybe I met maybe a handful of people. <laughs> but that's just the way she is. Um, yeah, that was probably one of my favorite uh, memories. Um, another one, she was asking, uh, "What's on your bucket list?" There's only one thing. And that's to do ayahuasca. I want to do that maybe in Peru or Costa Rica or something, but that's the, really the only thing on my bucket list that I really would love to do. Uh, the best advice that uh, she wants to know is, uh, for me, is to go within. All the answers are within. Um, and uh, to listen to your body too. If your body's telling you, you know, if you have heartburn, your body's telling you, you're too acidic, um, you need to bump up on alkaline. So, you know, have a stick of celery or, uh, or some alkaline water or something. Um, the best, actually, the best advice that I would give for parents was some of the advice I got myself. Um, after my daughter was born, somebody told me, don't look forward to all the milestones, like, you know, the first time they sit up or, you know, first tooth, first word because you'll miss everything that's going on in between. And it was the best advice I could give to a parent to share, to pass that on from that one person that told me. You'll miss everything in, bet in between. Just love them each day, every freaking second. Just love them and take lots of pictures. Uh, let, let me get back to some of these questions here. <laughs> oh, wow. Matthew is asking, do you like Sammy Hagar? Funny you asked that, Matthew, because I'll be going to a Sammy Hagar concert, um, gosh, in November, um, Night Rangers opening up for him. And last year I went to see him at his birthday bash in Cabo San Lucas. So yeah, I do like Sammy Hagar. As a matter of fact, I just learned today, within the hour before I came on live, Remember, remember that song by Rick Springfield, I Had Done Everything For You? I had done everything for you. Sammy Hagar wrote that song. And there's another song um, that's on the, the movie Rockstar. Stand up and shout. Sammy Hagar wrote that song too. So it's amazing all these songs that Sammy Hagar wrote that other people made famous. So yeah, I do love Sammy Hagar. He's cool. So I'm just scrolling for any more questions here. I don't know how far behind I am. I'm probably like 20 minutes behind on reading these questions. 
Uh, Debbie's asking, are you from New Jersey, Greg? I'm from Caldwell, New Jersey. Loved New Jersey Shore, spent many summers at Ocean Beach, New Jersey. I'm not, my dad is. My dad's from Clifton and my mom was born in Astoria but lived in Brooklyn, uh, New York. And before I was born, they moved from that area to upstate New York. And um, yeah, so I, uh, that's probably why I don't have a Jersey or a New York City accent, but I'm sure there's words I do say that are reminiscent of New York or that area. <laughs> but no, I, actually I do have a lot of uh, relatives in Jersey from like you know, the Manahawkin, Clifton, Lodi, Passaic, Garfield, that area. Um, so yeah, I love, I love Jersey. Small state, but I do love Jersey. A lot of great memories there. Devin Roberts, Greg, it's an honor. Been following for years. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Patricia is saying I should come to Bondi Beach in Sydney. I would love to go to Australia. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Um, Julie says, so glad to see you live, Craig. I've read so many of your articles during my dark night of the soul. Gosh, boy, we've all been there, haven't we? The dark night of the soul. And it's such a blessing to look back and see how far you've came since that dark night of the soul and what a blessing life has been. Okay, now I'm getting back to the point of the ayahuasca comments. So I'm I'm catching up slowly. Uh, Greg reminded me of Sammy Hagar when I first found him. <laughs> yeah, Sammy is awake. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I've written like at least three articles um, of some of Sammy's metaphysical experiences, like his conversation with ninth dimensional beings. Um, that was one of them, how he um, saw a UFO as well. He has this bracelet though and it says love and light on it so he's he gets it and uh, I was told recently that from um, this one intuitive that he actually Sam, Sammy and I are twins on a higher level so for whatever that's worth even though he's like 70 and I'm I turned 57 and real soon Van Hagar better than Van Halen. I don't think so, <laughs> but I like them both. I, I do. Uh, they, it's like two different, com completely different bands. Uh, Night Ranger brings back memories. Heck yeah. Love Rockstar. I, that's one of my favorite. Rockstar is one of my favorite movies ever because it tells the story of a guy who's a lead singer in a, a tribute band. And eventually he becomes the lead singer of this band that he idolized. And ultimately he ended up leaving the band and doing what the music that he enjoyed doing himself. So it's really a movie about finding yourself and uh, being comfortable with who you are instead of pretending to be what society expects you to be. It's a beautiful movie. I loved it. Uh, this is one question I won't answer. It is this month and it's coming up. So obviously it's um, it's not right now. <laughs> when is your birthday? I, I, I keep that private. I don't I don't celebrate my birthday. I don't let anyone know. It's just like another day for me. Um, but I will be the first one to put Happy Day of Incarnation on their Facebook page or celebrate somebody else's birthday. But for me, eh, I've done so many birthdays in so many lifetimes. <laughs> I don't celebrate it, but I am a triple Libra if that tells you anything. And if you can figure out the star signs, I do turn 57. So you could probably figure out when my birthday is based on that. So, and that just answered uh, Jet's question. What's your astrological sign? Triple Libra. Eric Johnson says, you always talk to girls. I get that. Well, Eric, 
eighty percent of this genre is females, and uh, you know, if the guys are asking me questions, I will ask answer their questions too. I think I already have already. Um, well, this is really cool too. You know, to the guys that are tuned in right now. One of the greatest things that happened to me was my daughter being born. When Before she was born, people would ask me, are you hoping for a son or a daughter? And like most guys at the time, I said son, you know, because you could go out and play ball with them and stuff like that. But it was a daughter. And since she was born, I wouldn't trade her for all the sons in the world. She brought me something I haven't felt since I was a kid, and that's the divine feminine. And that's what's been suppressed in many of us. Uh, heterosexual males, um, that we don't honor that. Um, and what she would do is she would, like, for example, I'd be watching, like, the Sunday night football game or something, and it'd be, like, 8 o'clock. And she'd crawl up on my lap, get into a little ball, and look at me with her little puppy dog eyes. And in her, in her little angel voice, she would say, Daddy, can I stay up and watch a little football with you? And I'd go, sure, pumpkin. Five minutes later, she's running around the house doing everything else other than watching football. So this went on for a couple of years <laughs> because she had me wrapped around her little pinky. And a couple of years later, I'm like, hey, you're not watching football. Go to bed. But she showed me a side of myself that I haven't see, seen since I was a kid. And that was because she brought that divine feminine in and softened me. Now, if that were a son, you know, the typical stereotype, oh, take it like a man, big boys don't cry and all that crap. Throw that out the window, it doesn't matter. Um, she showed me that soft side and I've told myself, I'm not gonna let this go. I'm gonna hang on to this. And uh, yes, I still cry at movies and um, I have a very emotional side but you know to the guys out there I highly recommend I'm not going to tell you what to do and what not to do but I highly recommend that you embrace that divine feminine number one your woman will appreciate that she'll love the soft side of you if you can express that within you and number two it doesn't make you any less of a man you know if people are going to give you crap for it that's their issue it's their own insecurity um, of their own lack of being a, a full man that can in, uh, bring in the divine feminine within him and still be himself. So uh, highly recommend that. Uh, embrace that divine feminine because within that you will find true balance. Okay? Moving on. Speaking of music, have you ever been to Summerfest in Wisconsin? No, but there's one in Pembroke Pines coming up in Florida. And there's all sorts of uh, rock bands there. Um, I think Steelheart's there. Um, Sebastian Bach, the lead singer from Skid Row, is one of the bands. I forgot all the other bands, but I would like to go to that. But I never heard of a Summerfest. Wow, got to look into that. Wisconsin. <clears throat> Karis, is it Karis, K-A-R-I-S, or is that Carl's, is asking, what is the dark night of the soul? You know it when you go through it. It's like the worst day of your life, and then it gets even worse after that. And then <laughs> just when you think it's worse, it's really, really, really worse. And, but there is a bottom there is ultimately that one bottom point where you hit that bottom and you lift yourself up. And slowly, slowly you come out of it. And day by day, it's like, it's like going to a buffet and piling your plate full of food. And it seems like it's never gonna empty, but one, you know, one forkful at a time, it's gonna empty. Eventually there'll be nothing on your plate. It's like the dark night of the soul. Um, there's so much going on and you're burdened down with so many different things but each day gets a little bit better and you learn so much from the experience and you grow spiritually from all the lessons that you learned um, there are quite a few articles on n5d about the dark night of, of the soul so um, 
once again, I recommend that you go to the search bar and just type in Dark Knight of the Soul and check out all the articles that are there. Rosie's asking, have I ever met any beings from other systems? Yeah, um, through channeling. I was doing that. Um, I was channeling ever since I was a kid. I've been channeling uh, the Zeta Reticuli. Um, obviously, I would say they're, they're grays. And uh, it's just funny because there's this girl I used to work with. And when she pronounced my name, she'd say, Greg, Greg, almost like gray egg. But uh yeah, I was, I've been channeling them for a while, and I actually cut them off um, because now, now I just go direct, directly to source and my guides. Um, they are so spot on. And not that they, not that the Zetas ever misled me either. Um, they never told me anything bad. It's just that I knew that I had to go to a, a more direct source um, for my information. So. Um, but as for meeting, that that's it. Um, then again, I mean, if you think <laughs> we're all ETs on this planet, we're meeting ETs each other every day. So, <laughs> uh, Patricia says, "Would love to see you in Australia." She'll be the tour guide. <laughs> awesome. How do you turn down energy? I'm too energized at most times. Ground. That's an easy one. Find ways to ground. If you can't find a way to ground, find a grounding stone to hold on with you. I know this one girl. It's like, all right, what, what stone are you hiding today? She has like all these um, gemstones that she'll put in her bra. <laughs> and she'll pull out like three stones. This is today's stones right here. So um, you don't have to put them there, but just find a place to put them and carry them with you. And hopefully that helps transmute some of the energy. Well, I'm going to take like uh, one or two more questions, seeing how it's like I've been on for over an hour. Um, gosh, an hour and 12 minutes. Um, Mike is saying, do you know that humans collectively are the creator god of the multiverse there are no gods outside of us um yeah i don't honestly i don't even use the word god um it's just too biblical for me i use creator source um and that the gods that i know of in the bible were the creator gods he wasn't actually creator source um they were creator gods as an s plural plural gods the el ohim El means God, Ohim is plural, the creator gods in the Bible. Yeah. Kathy's asking, Greg, do you feel the majority of celebrities and, and entertainers are clones? That I don't know. Um, but yeah, they have, well, just about all of them have basically sold their souls um, to play the role of whatever it is they have to play against us. Um, to keep us distracted and to use their symbolism as they're being controlled by their own puppeteers and handlers. So it's a very dark industry, uh, not just the Hollywood, but even the recording industry. Um, it's probably why I don't watch a lot of TV or really know any actors or actresses' names. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, let me find one last question here. Here's a comment, Kate. I love to hear you talk about your daughter. It's very moving. Yeah, my daughter is everything. I love her so much. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for Brittany, N5D wouldn't exist. This live event wouldn't be happening. I give her all the credit. She and I, speaking of soul contracts, she and I had a soul contract. She said that if I'm not on my path, by the time I'm 33, master number, she's coming in to put me on my path. She was conceived on my 33rd birthday. And to her, I give all the credit of N5D. And she's the one that brought in that divine feminine in me. And uh, I give, she doesn't have to do a darn thing the rest of her life. Right now, she's a waitress at Applebee's. And she's already helped millions and millions and millions of people. She's done her job, and I'm so grateful 
of her and what she's done. And you know, if it wasn't for her, none of us would be having this conversation. She's, she alone is the one that I give her all the credit. She's the one that helped millions of people. And I'm so grateful that she honored her soul contract with me. <laughs> Maria's asking, on the topic of football, go pack go, what team do you follow? Um, the only undefeated team in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they are 5-0, and and they just beat Houston last night on uh, Sunday night football. So looking forward to them beating Pittsburgh this upcoming Sunday. And, uh, yeah, that, that's my team. Go Chiefs. Funny reason why I'm a Chiefs fan, being from New York, too. When I was young, I found a football card, and it was Lenny Dawson. And when people would ask me, who's your favorite team, I'd think of the card, Chiefs. <laughs> Go Chiefs. I've been a Chief fan ever since. Okay. <laughs> Comment about Sebastian Bach from Skid Row, Canada rocks. Yes, he, he is from Canada. Okay. I'm going to scroll to the end here and see if I can find something. And I'm so sorry about everybody that's in between here. Rico is saying, I met this girl who brought out childhood feelings, just like you said. Should assume, I think he meant, should I assume it was just a twin flame since it ended, or wait for the twin flame? We all know internally um, whether that's your twin or not, um, despite those feelings, childhood feelings. She might, there's that one saying, for a season, a reason, or a lifetime, she might be one of those. Uh, there, but only you would know through discernment which one that is. But regardless, if it is a season, reason, or a lifetime that she came into your life, she brought those childhood feelings out in you. So honor that within her and embrace that in yourself as well. And don't let that go. Okay. Um, like I said, you know, the women that do come into your life will love you that much more. And uh, it doesn't make you any less of a man by embracing that divine feminine and those child childhood feelings. So, I think that's just about everything. Um, you know, I, I know I missed so many questions, and we could go on for hours, but I've, I still have a lot of work I have to do on N5D. So I just want to thank you all so very much for joining me and asking me these questions. Um, I hope I did answer the questions. Well, at least I know in my own heart that I answered them the best I could to the best of my abilities, and I hope they helped everyone. So until the next time, I bid you all good night and namaste.